O my Lord, Sri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. O all pervading personality of Godhead. O all pervading personality of Godhead. my respectful basis on to you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes. And the primeval cause of all causes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. Of water seen in fire or land seen on water. Of water seen in the fire and land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes Only because of him do the material universes temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature temporarily manifest by the reaction of the three modes of nature appear factual although they are unreal appear factual although they are unreal I therefore meditate upon him Lord Sri Krishna I therefore meditate upon him Lord Sri Krishna who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode who is eternally existent in which is forever free from the illusory representations in the material world. Which is forever free from the illusory representations in the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Pujita Kaitrovotra. Dharma Pujita Kaitrovotra. Paramo Nirmatsaranam Satam. Paramo Nirmatsaranam Satam. Vedyam Vastavam Atra Vastu. Shivadam tapa trayon mulanam. Shivadam tapo trayon mulanam. Shimad bhagavate mahamuni krite. Shimad bhagavate mahamuni krite. Kimva purir ishwaraha. Kimva purir ishwaraha. Sadyo hridi avurudyate tra. Sadyo hridi avurudyate tra. Krite bihi susu subes takshana. Krite bihi susu subes takshana. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. The highest truth is the reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. Such a truth uplifts the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavata Purana compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. Beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. It's sufficient in itself for God realization. It's sufficient in itself in God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. By this culture of knowledge. By this culture of knowledge. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpatoro galitam falam. Sukumakad Amrita Dravya Sam Yitam. Sukumakad Amrita Dravya Sam Yitam. Pibata Bhagavatam Rasam Alayam. Pibata Bhagavatam Rasam Alayam. Mahur Aho Rasika Bhuvibhava Kaha. Mahur Aho Rasika Bhuvibhava. O expert and thoughtful man, relish Shimad Bhagavatam. O expert and thoughtful man, relish Shimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literatures. The mature fruit of the desire tree of the Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadeva Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Even though its nectarian juice was already relishable for all, although its nectarian juice was already relishable, including liberated souls. Including liberated souls. Shinvatam swakata Krishna. Shinvatam swakata Krishna. Punya shravana kirtana. Punya shravana kirtana. Hiriyanta 
Stobhadrani Vidunati Suhit Satam to hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures. To hear about Krishna from Vedic literature. Or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita. Or to hear from him directly through Bhagavad Gita. Is itself righteous activity. It is self righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna. And for who hears about Krishna. Lord Krishna, who is dwelling in everyone's heart. Lord Krishna who is dwelling within everyone's heart. Acts as a best wishing friend. Acts as best wishing friend. And purifies a devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nasta pray suabhadre su Nasta pray suabhadre su Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhakti Bhavati Naistiki In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam, As he hears more about Krishna from Bhagavatam and from the devotees, and from the devotees <coughs> he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhavo, kama loba dayas chaye, chete tairanabhidam, stitvam satve prasiddhati. By development of devotional service, By development of devotional service one, becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus, material lust and avarice are diminished. And thus, material lust and avarice are diminished. Evam prasanna manaso, Evam prasanna manaso Bhagavat bhakti yogataha Bhagavat bhakti yogataha Bhagavat tattva vijyanam Mukta Sangha Sajayate. When these impurities are wiped away, when these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. The candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. And understands the science of God perfectly. And understands the science of God perfectly. Chidyante Savasam Saya Chidyante Savasam Saya Chidyante Drista Evat Manishwari Thus Bhakti Yoga severs the hard knot of material affection. That the Bhakti Yoga severs the hard knot of material affection. And enables one to come at once to the stage of a Samsayam Samagram. And enables one to come at once to the stage of a Samsayam Samagram. Understanding of the Supreme Personality, uh, understanding of the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Understanding the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 15, Text 27, again. Desa Kalarta Yuktani Pitapopa Samanicha Haranti smaratas chitam Govinda pihitani me. Now I am attached to those instructions imparted to me. Oh. Okay, well, I'll, I'll just read. Uh, I'll just read it. Now I am attracted to those instructions imparted to me by the personality of Godhead Govinda because they are impregnated with instructions for relieving the burning heart in all circumstances of time and space. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. So we read this yesterday, but today we're gonna go over it point by point. First of all, in the, in the translation itself, Arjuna expresses the genuine, let's say, duty of a, of a devotee, that a devotee, first of all, was attracted to the instructions uh, given by uh, the spiritual master, in, in Arjuna's case, Lord Krishna, the supreme original spiritual master. And 
Therefore, one continues associating with the spiritual master by remembering and following his instructions. This is the desire of every spiritual master, that the disciple will always remember and follow the instructions that are given for their upliftment. And uh, Arjuna says that uh, these instructions are impregnated with inst these uh, instructions given to him are impregnated with instructions for relieving the burning heart of all circumstances of time and space. So that is a fact that, that we are all troubled by our existence in the material world, but by uh, remaining faithful to the instructions given to us by bona fide spiritual masters, uh, that burning heart is relieved in all time and space, in all places and in all time. So in the purport, Prabhupada says, herein Arjuna refers to the instruction of the Bhagavad Gita. Yeah, because he received not the Srimad Bhagavatam, but he received the Bhagavad Gita. He, he engaged in asking Krishna, Krishna questions, and Krishna answered his questions, and that became the uh, Bhagavad Gita, the sacred song of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, which was imparted to him by the Lord on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. The Lord left behind him the instructions of the Bhagavad Gita, not for the benefit of Arjuna alone, but also for all time, and in all lands. So that means Bhagavad Gita is the absolute truth because it's true in all places and in all time. Therefore, it is real science. It's not subject to change or alteration. There are no mistakes in it. It's true for all time and all places. The Bhagavad Gita being spoken by the Supreme Person of Godhead is the essence of all Vedic wisdom. So there's knowledge, and then there's wisdom. Uh, what is the difference? Wisdom is the ability to use the knowledge in any circumstance by which one needs to uh, overcome. So in the material world, there are many obstacles that we have to overcome. But if we're armed with the wisdom of Srimad Bhagavad, uh, Bhagavad Gita, then we can overcome all those difficulties. So that's the difference in wisdom and knowledge. Knowledge is something theoretical. Wisdom is the practical use of it in different situations. It is nice, nicely presented by the Lord himself for all who have very little time to go through the vast Vedic literatures like Dupanishads, Puranas, and Vedanta Sutras. Well, yes, we don't have much time. We have so many duties that we have to perform. So Bhagavad Gita is relatively a short book. It's, it's only 700 verses. The Srimad Bhagavatam is 18,000. So how are you going to read 18,000 verses and purports? It's very difficult. But it is possible to read the 700 verses and purports of the Bhagavad Gita and the purports by Srila Prabhupada. It is put within the study of the great historical epic Mahabharata, which was especially prepared for the less intelligent class, namely the women, the laborers who are men, and those who are worthless descendants of Brahmanas, also referring to men. Kshatriyas, that's referring to men, and higher sections of the Vaishyas, which is also referring to men. So the men out out uh, pace the women here. You have one, two, three, four, four references to men and only one re reference to women. The problem which arose in the heart of Arjuna on the battlefield of Kukshetra was solved by the teachings of the Bhagavad Gita. What was his problem? He got paralyzed. He couldn't perform his duty that he's uh, obliged to do. Uh, 
because it's his dharma, it's his occupational duty to be a chatriya and protect the principles of religion from adharma. But he was not able to do it. And he was refusing to follow the order of Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Now, in the previous sentence when it says that uh, the uh, Mahabharata was written especially for the less intelligent class of people. However, Bhagavad Gita is meant for the leaders of society. So, embedded in that great epic uh, poem, the Mahabharata, which has, uh, it doesn't have 18,000 verses, it has 120,000 verses. It's huge. But embedded in it is a very short uh, part, which is called the Bhagavad Gita, which has the essence of all knowledge in 700 verses. That's why it's easy to get lost in the Vedas because there's so much text, so much stories and things, it's, it's just overwhelming and, and people get lost and they lose the thread uh, that holds it all together, that is Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So it's just like finding a needle in a haystack or a diamond in a cave. Therefore, you can see what Prabhupada did. He, he extracted Bhagavad Gita and translated it and gave purports of the Acharyas of himself. And also, he gave the Srimad Bhagavatam. These are the two most important books in the Vedic literature. Again, after the, uh, the problem which arose in the heart of Arjuna, the battlefield of Kurukshetra, was solved by the teachings of Bhagavad Gita. Again, after the departure of the Lord from the vision of earthly people, when Arjuna was face to face with being vanquished in his acquired power and prominence, he wanted again to remember the great teachings of the Bhagavad Gita to, just to teach all concerned that the Bhagavad Gita can be consulted in all critical times, not only for solace from all kinds of mental agonies, but also for the way out of great entanglements which may embarrass one in some critical hour. So here we see Bhagavad Gita is the solution to all problems. And especially the most uh, disturbing problems uh, when one may be embarrassed and some critical time. So you don't need to read any other book. Simply Bhagavad Gita and its expansion, which is Srimad Bhagavatam. And you'll have answer to every question of life and to every problem that you have to overcome. That's why uh, great devotees simply read and reread and discuss and elaborate Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. There's no need for any other scripture. As we recite every day, what is the need of any other scripture? The merciful Lord left behind him the great teachings of the Bhagavad Gita so that one can take the instructions of the Lord even when he is not visible to material eyesight. Well, that's the point. Krishna's words and Krishna himself are non-different. So fortunately, due to the pure parampara of the Gaudiya Vaishnava Acharyas, we have the original words of Krishna spoken to Arjuna. So when you read Bhagavad Gita as it is, you're hearing exactly what Krishna spoke to Arjuna without any adulteration, subtraction, or addition. Material senses cannot have any estimation of the Supreme Lord, but by his inconceivable power, the Lord can incarnate himself to the sense perception of the conditioned souls in a suitable manner, th manner through the agency of matter, which is also another form of the Lord's manifested energy. So he's talking about the deity form, and he's talking about Bhagavad Gita, which is written on paper, and, and there's ink, and there's uh, string and there's glue 
However, it has the words of the Supreme Personality of Godhead intact. Thus, the Bhagavad Gita, or any authentic scriptural sound representation of the Lord, is also the incarnation of the Lord. There's no difference between the sound representation of the Lord and the Lord himself. One can derive the same benefit from the Bhagavad Gita as Arjuna did in the personal presence of the Lord. So this is an amazing statement, and it's true. Uh, and the fact that Prabhupada chose Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam as his main focus is because he understands how Krishna has revealed himself in this world. And Krishna is Parthasarati, the driver of the chariot, is the highest form of the Lord f that should be for our meditation. And in that way, uh, the let's say, the intricacies of Bhagavad Gita will be revealed to us through offering service, chanting, and regularly hearing and discussing Bhagavad Gita. Okay, so we'll stop right there because it's a long purport. Are there any questions on what we've read so far? Yes. Why is Bhagavad Gita what does it mean, the Bhagavad Gita, the essence of all the of wisdom? What, 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 why is the essence, what is the essence there in Bhagavad Gita? Sarvadharma prithya ja mami kam saranam braja ham tvam sarvapapi pyo muksi syami masu chaha. Krishna tells Arjuna, just give up all your fabricated dharmas. Christian Dharma, Muslim Dharma, Jain Dharma, Sikh Dharma, uh, Hindu Dharma, just give it up, give them all up, and surrender unto me. And if you do this, how do you surrender? Manmana bhava mad bhakto mad yajimam namaskru mami vaisasi satyam te pratijani priyosame. Always think of me, become my devotee, worship me, offer your homage unto me. If you do this, I promise you that you become very dear to me and you will come back to me, right? So, and if you surrender to the Lord, then he says he'll free you from all previous karma so that there's no obstacle for you to be engaged in his devotional service. And therefore, you have nothing to hesitate for, nothing to fear, nothing to doubt, and just surrender. So this is the ultimate message. Why, well, this is the way to go out of the material world. You surrender to Krishna, and you go back to Godhead. You're already back to Godhead when you surrender, because you surrender through devotional service and following the instructions of bona fide gurus. So there's no difference between devotional service in this world and devotional service in the spiritual world. because whether it's this world or the spiritual world, it's directed toward pleasing Krishna. Sam Sadir Haritoshana. So that is the essence of all wisdom. It can solve all problems. And the process of surrender, Anakulyasya, Sankalpa, Pratikulyasya, Varjanam, like Raksisya, Titi, Vishwaso, so this saranagati, this surrender to the Lord, is explained. Always accept everything favorable for the Lord, reject everything unfavorable, accept Krishna as your only protector, you don't need anyone else protecting you. And uh, don't have any other interest in life other than serving the Lord and uh, accept everything that happens as the mercy of the Lord and remain always humble and meek in the, in the execution of devotional service. So this, this is the process of surrender or saranagati. So you see that verse 1866 is the essence of all Vedic wisdom. 
By the way, Ramanujacharya chose that as one of his main verses. He chose three verses, two of them are from Bhagavad Gita. Ananya chintayan tamam ye janasapayusasate. Uh, uh, yeah, so ananya chintayan tamam ye janasapayusasate. Nityam, what is it? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then uh, uh, Yoga Shemam Yeah. Uh, so that those two verses were chosen by Ramanujacharya, and then there's a third one also that's not from Bhagavad Gita. But he chose two of those verses as the most important. Uh, three verses as most important, and two of them from Bhagavad Gita. It just shows how important the Bhagavad Gita. Nitya uh, Yukta yeah. Um, so this is the essence. That's why it says Bhagavad Gita is the essence of all knowledge. Any other questions? Te sam nitya biyukta nam yogashema vaham yam. That's right. Anybody else? Yeah, the last, uh, the end of the, this paragraph, the, he said that, um, yeah, uh, Arjuna remember the great teaching. That means Arjuna, at a certain point, he, he, he forgot his teaching, and then later on remember it again, or? Well, when you become bewildered by Maya, you forget, right? right. So he got bewildered because of his family attachment. So by hearing Bhagavad Gita, he became aware again of what is, what is the essence of all Vedic wisdom, Sharanam or Saranagati. Right? When we become uh, panicked due to attachments and we can't perform our duty, our occupational duty, which is devotional service, we forget. We get confused. We get paralyzed. So Arjuna had you know, what's in modern terms referred to as a panic attack. He was not able to think straight. Oh, of course, yeah. The, the last point is that okay, and, uh, the Bhagavad Gita, just to, t uh, you remember the great teachings of the Bhagavad Gita, just to teach all concern that the Bhagavad Gita can be consulted in all critical times, okay, not only for solace from all kinds of mental agonies, but also for the way great entanglement which may embarrass one in some critical power. So uh, he's referring here to Gandhi. Gandhi, if, if you read uh, the uh, Gandhi statement about Bhagavad Gita, it should be in the Bhagavad Gita, right? Let's see if it's in the front. It should be on the cover. Anyway. Gandhi said that whenever he's uh, disturbed by life, he opens the Bhagavad Gita and finds solace, right? But Prabhupada's point is, it's not only to uh, relieve yourself of anxiety and fear and doubt, but it's also the way out of great entanglements which may embarrass one in some critical hour. So there are many situations like that. And uh, by referring to Bhagavad Gita, one can solve even those problems that seem unsolvable. Right? So uh, therefore, and Bhagavad Gita explains here, 
if you look at the 12th chapter, 12th and 13th verse, he explains, I based the Sarva Bhutana Maitra Karana Evacha Nirmamo Nirahankara Samadukha Sukam Shami Santusta Satatam Yogi Yatat Madritanishaya Maya Pitamano Vidir Yomad Bhakta Same Priya. So this is a verse that can help a person exactly in what it says here. To, to be a way out of great entanglements which may embarrass one in some critical hour. So this verse says, one who is not envious but a kind friend to all living entities, who does not think himself a proprietor and is free from false ego. Well, most people get into arguments about property. This belongs to me. Why did you take it? I loaned you some money. Why didn't you pay me back? Uh, you cheated me in a dealing in a deal where I expected to make more money. You know, so people kill each other for those reasons. But here it's saying, one should not think himself a proprietor, and is free from false egos. So one one person could, say, well, I'm a uh, white uh, Christian, you know, something like that, and you're uh, you're not uh, equal to me because of some bodily difference. You see, so people kill each other for reasons like that. So, therefore, uh, who is equal in both happiness and distress, in other words, not disturbed, not elated when there's happiness and not disturbed when there's distress, who is tolerant. So you have to tolerate so many things in life. If you don't tolerate things, why do you think there's road rage? Because somebody you don't know, you've never met in your life, but they seem to cut you off while you were driving on the highway. So you get really upset and you start chasing after that person. And then you both stop and you get out and you shoot that person and kill him. It happens all the time, you see. So it's tolerant, always satisfied. Doesn't matter whether you have a lot or little. Be satisfied by using any Krishna service. Self-controlled and engaged in devotional service with determination his mind and intelligence fixed on me. Such a devotee of mine is very dear to me. Now Arjuna was not in that state of mind in the beginning of Bhagavad Gita, but in the end of Bhagavad Gita he was. So this can save you. It gives you a way out of great entanglements which may embarrass one in some critical hour. Most people in their critical hour they do things that they regret later on, right? Just like uh, you might, uh, some man and his, and his girlfriend, they were in the neighborhood of a riot in, uh, in Portland. They didn't go to see the riot. You know, there was protests that turned into a riot. There was a lot of uh, beating beatings taking place and, and burning and so forth. But they saw some people harassing a woman. And those people were harassing her because she was not part of their group and they thought she was part of another group. And they were harassing her and they were starting to beat on her. So they ran over to stop that. And then instead of, and then the people that were beating on that woman, they started beating on the people that came to help that woman, right? And eventually, uh, it turned into a terrible uh, beating and stomping, and, and uh, the man got knocked out completely in, in serious condition. So, it's, it's, here's a situation where, out of nowhere, th there's a tragedy, right? Because people have no self-control. They, they are completely, uh, let's say, out of control. And it happens like, you know, in, in, in the way that you can never predict it, that such a thing would happen. Okay, so therefore, the same thing was in Arjuna's case when he saw that his family was on both sides and he knew that, you know, 
either one side's going to win and the other side is going to be dead, or the other side's going to win and this side is going to be dead. Either way, he's a loser because he's got loved ones on both sides. So he got confused because of family attachment and because he didn't see how he would be happy whether he won or lost. So those are not considerations if you're dedicated to serving Krishna. But if you have bodily attachment and you're, con and you're concerned about happiness, right, then you, then you get affected by the situation. You can't, you can't function. Okay, so this verse, uh, 12th chapter, verses 12 and thir 13 and 14, uh, is a type of verse that could save people, if they follow it, they could save them all kinds of problems in life. Haribo, thank you. The one thing is amazing how Maya is so powerful that a person forgets that 